Ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of Masters of Marketing. In this episode, I have with me Lulu Khazan. She is a senior entrepreneur and the founder and host of Conversations with Lulu. It's a podcast that talks about business, entrepreneurship, management, and much, much more. In this podcast, we talked about how to start a podcast, how she started the podcast, how she started marketing it, how she markets it now, how she monetizes it, how she invests in personal branding to grow her brand, and much, much more. Tune in and enjoy the episode. <laughs> Welcome to Master of Marketing. Thank you. So happy to be here. Yeah? Are you really? I am. Yeah, I can see it in your eyes. Otherwise, I wouldn't have come. <laughs> me and me. Yeah. Who is Lulu and what do you do for a living? So, um, so Lulu, I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been, I've been here in the UAE for 21 years. I uh, came from Lebanon and started my career here. I spent six years in the corporate world and then moved into the startup world since 2009. First as a, in an advisory, startup advisory firm, and then I launched my own company, which is called Nabbish.com, which is used to be the largest online freelance marketplace for the region. So anytime you wanted to hire a graphic designer, a translator, an accountant, a web developer, you would come on Nabbish. We had over 110,000 freelancers wow. across the region around 15,000 companies uh, posted jobs on Nabish. And I ran that company for eight years. And then we sold it in uh, 2020 uh, to another regional player here called Urid. And since 2019, I've been doing two things. Um, the first thing is investing in tech startups. So using all the knowledge I've, I've learned about building uh, a company and going through the process of fundraising and hiring and working with developers and marketing and all of that stuff. Um, and also my network that I've built, uh, you know, over the years in, in Dubai to invest in, uh, in, in tech startups. Mm. And this is through a company called Spade Ventures that I lead. And uh, the other thing I do is uh, a podcast called Conversations with Lulu which is really, you know, bringing the region uh, and hopefully the world's top voices on technology and startups and entrepreneurship and investment to educate people about the space. Because I think entrepreneurship and, and startups is, is an extremely exciting space. Um, but, you know, the majority of people are in corporate jobs and they don't really know a lot about startups. How do I get into it? Uh, is it difficult? Is it glamorous? You know, mm. what's what's the road to building a business? How do I get money for it? How do I hire and all of that? So, so through conversations with Lulu, I, I I share, you know, insights and personal journeys of people that have been there, done that, so that hopefully we can inspire other people to take that leap or learn something about the industry. And if they don't feel ready themselves to become an entrepreneur, they can invest in the startup ecosystem through Spade Ventures. So right. uh, kind of like a full circle, uh, the, you know, a startup champion. Uh, <laughs> this yeah. is what I've been doing over the past uh, four or five years now. And conversations with Ludo has an angle, like more into finance, fintech, or not necessarily? No, so yeah. I try to bring uh, people that are extremely interesting to me. Mm. Um, so initially, I mean, conversations with Lulu was born in 2020. Uh, the first episode I aired was in March 2020, which was in the middle of COVID. Mm. So it was a way for me to stay connected with friends and with people that I admire. And if you go back into the startup ecosystem, I mean, here in this part of the world, you know, we didn't really used to have a startup ecosystem up until maybe 10 or 12 years ago or so. So I was part of that first wave of entrepreneurs that went on to build tech companies. Some of them are still alive today, these companies, and some of them aren't. So... So conversations with Lulu was a way for me to bring these amazing people that you know I I used to see all the time and we kind of shared similar journeys and and hardships and so on and and have a conversation about that journey and what they've learned and what made them successful and how did they overcome all the challenges that we have in this part of the world specifically uh, and they're awesome people in general. So I, I, I never invited anybody that I didn't feel comfortable with. Uh, I never invited anybody that came through a PR agency. Um, you know, I get a lot of people, I got a lot of inbound on my LinkedIn. Basically, you should bring me on the podcast, etc. But I, I spend a lot of time thinking about who I want to invite and, and what value this person brings. And more importantly, if I am personally curious about that person or not, because mm. if I'm not curious, like we're not going to have a good podcast. 
Makes sense. So if I'm if I'm talking to you and I don't really care about your your story, but you're there because I don't know you're the CEO of some company yeah. and it doesn't it it doesn't make sense, right? So yeah. I need to really personally like and admire these people and be genuinely curious about what they're doing. Because sometimes they also could be doing something very interesting. They could be doing, I don't know, building the latest and greatest in artificial intelligence, for example. But if it's a topic that is personally not interested to me, yeah. uh, I, I, won't, I won't bring them on board. Makes sense. So the personal element is, is very important of, uh, of the guests. Yeah, to you. Of course. Yeah. And, and people feel it. You know, yeah. sometimes I get calls after an episode like and tell me, people tell me, you know, I really felt the chemistry between you and this person. Like, yeah. you know, you were joking. Like, and people feel it. And it's mm. mu much more enjoyable to listen yeah. to than, than kind of like a scripted uh, question, answer, question, answer uh, type podcast. It's yeah, conversation. Yeah. Right. With Lulu. With Lulu. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Mm. So... Got it. I wanted to ask you what you, what what is your podcast about, but I guess you answered it. So it's it's technology mm. and people that are building tech companies primarily. Why tech companies? Because um, tech companies can scale incredibly, and these are the types of companies that can like change an economy and 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 make a huge impact. Uh, these are companies that are currently building, uh, you know, a lot of the infrastructure that you see here today, for example, payments, right? I mean, payments, we were all up maybe until five years ago, we were all paying cash, uh, 80, 90 percent, um, probably across the region. But now most of us are paying, you know, Apple Pay and credit cards and, and so on because of all of these companies that have also... Um, laid that that sort of infrastructure for us to make payments so e-commerce is huge everything you buy is now online and, and so on so yeah these are the types of companies that can make like a really big impact and uh so i like i like to hear these stories and i like to learn from uh, from the people building these big companies um so so tech companies are important leadership is also something very important and interesting to, interesting to me so how do you manage your company, how do you hire people, how do you build a great culture, you know, and how does the culture impact the, the growth of your business and so on. So that's also important. Wellness is also very important to me. So how as a leader do you keep healthy mentally and, and physically and, you know, what do you need to do to become a better person and so on. So these, these are the types of topics that I find uh, really interesting. So technology, wellness and management. Yeah, pretty much. All and right. investing. And investing. Yeah. Okay. So how do you invest in startups? What do you look for in entrepreneurs? Uh, what uh, what sort of information do you need when you're writing somebody a $20 million check? Um, so so those types of conversations as well. Love it. Mm. I think I should look at your... Um, so here, actually, I just want to look at it quickly. Because I... Like, first impression... Building an entrepreneurial knowledge hub, founder at Spade, founder at Conversations with Lulu. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, Conversations with Lulu. So that's what it says. That's the about, in a way. Um, in depth business, tech, entrepreneurship, leadership discussions with Mike Worthy guests. So, business, tech, entrepreneurship. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Why did you start your podcast? What are your short-term and long-term goals? So the podcast, it was a, it was a COVID baby, right? So uh, I had just uh, actually, I was in the process of exiting my company and COVID hit. And uh, it was a lonely, lonely time. And I thought, you know what? And I had been thinking about it, by the way, f mm. for a while. But I never got around to do it. I always thought, you know, do people really need another, not another, actually, there aren't any, but uh, do people really need a startup podcast? What value can I bring? Um, you know, do I really want to put myself out there? Um, do I have really things to say, et cetera, et cetera. So I always had all these like, it's not going to work, you know, because, but then when COVID hit, um, I think, you know, the, the time was, the time was right. Uh, everybody was stuck in their houses. And I thought, you know, I really want to keep connection with with people that I really care about. So I thought, you know, let me let me let me give it a try. So initially, it was all done online, um, and 
yeah, I started inviting friends pretty much who are quite successful and started having these conversations and the, pos the, the feedback used to be quite good and kept uh, kept doing and and I'm the type of person that doesn't mm. like to quit you know and uh, I like to see things through and I I knew that with podcasting it's a long it's a long term game like I know that you know my first first podcast I think had like 200 downloads or 250 downloads or something like that and 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 I knew that this number will stay like this for maybe a year or two years and and that this is the the name of the game like I so I I had my expectations managed I knew that um, this is not going to be, uh, you know, a hit in, like from the first month or from the first year or even from the first five years. So I was willing to, you know, keep doing it uh, for a long time, I, provided that I was enjoying it, provided that, you know, I felt I was putting good content out there. Right. So that's so I started it because I wanted to keep connections with amazing people. I wanted to have conversations with them. And I thought, you know what, let's share that knowledge to, to everybody else. So that was the, the initial um, mm, love uh, it. reason. Mm. I, it was not like I'm going to, I actually, I never thought I'm going to make money out of the podcast. Like I thought this will be in 10 years, uh, if anything. Because anyway, even if you listen to the stories of some of the really big podcasters today around the world, they tell you like they've been doing it for a very long time and consistently. Yeah. Consistency is key. So I, I had that in mind from the beginning. Uh, so my expectations were managed. So I didn't get frustrated. I didn't stop. Uh, and yeah, even when numbers go up and down, I just keep going. So when you first started it, you didn't necessarily have long-term goals for it. You started because you wanted to have these conversations and because of COVID. Yeah. And now do you have long-term goals for it? Yeah. So I didn't start it because I wanted to do a brand building exercise or, or, or something like that. Okay. That, was not, uh, that was not the reason behind it. Uh, I, I wanted to have these conversations genuinely. Uh, now, today, it's different. So mm. today, um, so I am monetizing the podcast. So mm. I have sponsors. And... I, I started seeing, th probably around towards the middle of last year, I started realizing that, okay, this, this thing can be a business on its own. Uh, this thing is not a side project. Um, I can build like a, you know, I should treat my podcast like a startup, like I treated my company. And, uh, and, and follow the same, uh, the same tactics I did uh, through when building my company. Find amazing talent, trying to hire the right people. Um, be very much data driven, look at what the data is telling me, what the numbers are telling me, uh, spend on marketing and invest more in marketing, um, uh, you know, craft my messages and figure out the, the, the sort of the pitch. So today it's, it's more of a business to me. So today it's, it's actually a core pillar of, of what I do. And, uh, and my plans are to build a global podcast out of Dubai. And I think it's totally doable. Uh, you see a lot of really big podcasts in Europe. Dubai is, uh, you know, a place where everybody everybody comes here for conferences, for tourism, for business. So I really think, you know, we can build a global podcast uh, out of out of Dubai and become the sort of link between, you know, what's happening here and and what's happening outside and showing the world, you know, all of the amazing things that are being built here. And anybody you ask today uh, in the let's say in the technology world or the startup world, they will tell you like Dubai, like UAE, Saudi Arabia, like this is where the next big of wave of uh, growth going to happen. So it's going to be exciting here and yeah. I want to be in, in the middle of it. Right. And when did you realize that that podcast of yours could grow and could be monetized after how many years? So I'm on my fifth year now. Okay. Yeah. When did you realize that? Mid around mid last year, so after okay. four four and a half years. Yeah. And you've been doing it consistently since the beginning. Yes. How often you put a podcast or an episode live? Every two weeks. Okay. Uh, I I put an episode every two weeks, and then I used to take breaks for summer and for Christmas because mm. I traveled with my family and. You know, I didn't want to have to commit, you know, to every two weeks and so on. And uh, and I thought I could just stop. But then every time I stop, my numbers drop. Yeah. It's as if like you go back 50 percent, which is which yeah. is ridiculous because you stop for, you know, a month or like a month and a half. Yeah. And then you come back and it's almost it's you're not starting from zero, but but you're starting like 50 percent at 50 percent. Right. Um, so I decided I'm not stopping anymore.
So I will not, I will keep publishing every two weeks, uh, yeah. every, every, you know, every two weeks of the year. Uh, and then hopefully eventually uh, publish weekly. But I'm not ready. I'm not ready for that yet. I don't have the infrastructure to do it. Right. Yet. Yeah. But and yeah, don't stop. I mean, that's the that's the yeah. biggest learning for me is the second you stop, you see it. You see it in the numbers. Yeah, the numbers drop <clears throat> and everything. Yeah. For me, the same. I took a break, probably like uh, three months of posting and then <laughs> everything. Uh, yeah. yeah. As yeah. if, you know, just have to start from the beginning. Yeah, you need that consistency. You got to do it. Uh, what I do sometimes, like now, f I interview. Because what happens, again, it's like any business, right? You just go and source people to come, like guests to come to the to the podcast. So I go into that, like, I'm going to source, I'm going to reach out, da, 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 da. And then suddenly I get two, three, four that say yes. And then I drop. So, But these two, three, four, I show them in one, two weeks. And then I have content for... You know, for weeks to go, mm -hmm. weeks to come. Yeah, that's so a great uh, never, strategy. Yeah, so I never stop posting. Mm. And probably what, what helps me is that I have, you know, the social media team or the marketing team as well that help me with editing and creating captions and posting. So yeah. I don't have to do this stuff. Yeah, well, you're lucky to have that. Yeah. I was doing everything on my own for a very long time. Mm. But that's doable as well, right? Like for the people that want to start a podcast, they could do it themselves. It's doable, yeah. yeah. But but I think people underestimate how much effort it takes. Yeah. It's not, uh, you know, it, uh, making editorial decisions are, is, is very time consuming and very important. Mm. That's why you can't give your podcast to anybody to edit it. You, yeah. you, like you, you, especially if it's a topic, for example, for me, it's, you know, it's technology, it's business, it's startups. Most people don't really understand uh, the topic and if they don't then they can't edit right? they yeah. can't they can't tell which piece is important and which pieces are important so I need to make those editorial decisions Ooh, myself yeah. so it takes time mm. of course it does or you can work with a studio like this one here like you Potster, can. and then yeah. they'll do all the cuts and shorts and edits but again for specific topics like yours Probably you gotta be on top of it. But for me as well, like the people that I, you know, the people that work on my podcast, the editing, they're not necessarily, you know, experts in the topic itself, but they, you know, they're smart people. Mm. They, you know, they get to say, ah, oh, yeah, this makes sense, that message makes sense yeah. for the shorts, right? Yeah. And for the long, for that episode, it's just gonna go live fully, unless there is something you say that we're not happy with, we just cut that apart. But, mm. you know, it's easy in a way to edit the yeah. long version, the long YouTube version. Yeah. Cool. Um, how did you first start marketing it and how do you do today and how do you plan in the future? Yeah, so uh, marketing for me initially was uh, was very basic. I mean, I used to take uh, two or three clips of the podcast and put them on social media mm. and I didn't even used to boost it or, or anything. So I, w I would just post it on my Instagram and my LinkedIn and, uh, and that's it. Yeah. Um, it's not, you know, a great way to to grow a podcast. You need you need to do a lot more, and and I'm realizing that more and more. So, um, I think you need, you know, every podcaster is also um, they're also the brand, right? So there's the podcast, but they're also them, like the host. So, so as a host, you know, I need to be more active. I need to talk more about the things that I'm doing. Uh, build more of a community and a connection with the audience, uh, engage the audience, ask them what they want to hear uh, about and what they want, you know, what what types of questions they want me to ask. So sometimes, let's say if I have a guest, I would say on social media, you know, I have, uh, I don't know, Eli Havi from Anrami coming, for example, what do you want to ask him? Like, what do you think I should ask him about? So try to build a relationship with the people that are listening. Posting more and consistently, so I, I didn't used to post consistently and like the podcast, I think and you need you need to be posting uh, consistently and also be data driven. So I've recently hired a, um, um, someone who's going to help me basically on marketing, just literally purely performance marketing. So making sure everything is set up in terms of monitoring, in terms of attribution, in terms of you know, cost per click and f figuring out uh, really where is the traffic coming from? Uh, uh, how much am I spending to acquire, uh, you know, a download? Um, so, so again, being more scientific and more data driven about it versus like, let me post 
boost like put a hundred dirhams boost it and then uh, and then uh, figure out what's going to happen so yeah it's it's a business and i need to treat it like a business and like you would market any business you need a proper marketing strategy social media strategy uh organic strategy and paid strategy and and so so this is what i'm working on uh, today everything has been organic so far like i haven't mm. paid oh, really? uh, money yeah. no uh, i mean apart from the editing part but uh, but yeah, I think now um, I have some budgets because I have sponsors, so I will I will start experimenting more with paid marketing and see see what that leads. And I think it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting uh, because not many people have grown a podcast here in in our part of the world. So I think it would be it would be an interesting learning experience as well. See what works and what doesn't work and. What type of content is clicking on TikTok and what type of content is clicking on Instagram? And I'm like a top voice on LinkedIn. So what kind of content is going to go on LinkedIn and uh, need to do more work on the website, uh, making it SEO friendly. And uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's, a whole, it's a full marketing strategy, uh, basically. Interesting. And how would you fund it, that marketing strategy? So I have I have sponsors. So uh, so the 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 yeah the show, I can afford to to hire people. I can afford to uh, to spend and experiment. Good stuff. Yeah yeah. Plus honestly, like even if I didn't, I'll probably try to find a budget, even if it's a small budget, to try to to experiment with these things with freelancers, uh, and with people that can you know that have different expertise that can help in different areas. Yeah. Because ultimately, if it's not just the money that you need to think about, it's it's the results, right? So if you're paying some money but you're getting massive results, th then great. Then you can afford to pay money. Um, Makes sense. And when your show grows, the sponsors will come. What benefits are you getting from your podcast? Continuous learning. So every time I have a guest coming, I do a lot of research. I spend probably sometimes a day, sometimes two days on research. Uh, I make sure I understand the topic very well. I make sure I know the guest, the guest's background very well, um, because you, you know, if they say something, you wanna, you wanna know what they're talking about. Not only for you to understand what they're saying, but also to simplify it to your audience in case you think your audience is not gonna understand it. So mm. you need to, and and the best way to to learn something is to teach it right so so when you when you simplify things to an audience you're also uh, like cementing that learning as well so there's a lot of learning that i do um and then this is before i even get the guest and then i get the guest and then obviously there's learnings mm -hmm. that come out from the podcast which are like super beneficial um and then there's learnings about myself that I get after I watch the podcast, right? Because I, I do the editing, like I do the editorial decisions. I learn about my interview style. I learn about um, the types of, like, I, you know, sometimes when you're doing a podcast, you're in it and you're not necessarily like 100% focused on every question. Yeah. Sometimes you do a follow on. <laughs> But when you look at it again, you think, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't have asked this. Maybe I could have asked this in a different way. So there's a lot of personal development that's happening on, on my side as well. And like, I don't think I can do it. But, you know, if I watch the first episode that I put out, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a, a huge difference between <laughs> yeah. what it was back then and, and what it is today. So it's it's constant learning. Mm. Um, and then there's obviously the money. So so. I have sponsors, so I'm, you know, it's a, it's a financial benefit, which is which is amazing. And when you get that financial benefit as a podcaster, you start feeling that okay, you know, all the effort that I've put in, all the work that I've put in, it's it's now starting to pay to pay uh, to pay off. Now, if you do the podcast as a means to promote your business, then great. So if like you, you know, you have a marketing agency and you do a marketing podcast, and then that becomes a lead generation tool for your agency fantastic but for me like i don't it's not a lead generation tool to anything mm. uh today so it needs to be a standalone business uh by itself and 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 that's why the you know having sponsors or having um s some way to mo to monetize is is very important mm. and also it builds credibility and it builds exposure so i get invited to a lot of conferences i have speaking opportunities all over the world um so you you know you, you, you people know you recognize you they come and say hello to you at events like uh, what just happened now 
like what just happened now. Mm. So it's it's nice, right? Yeah. I mean, you 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 get some recognition for the the work that you're putting out. It's fulfilling. You feel that okay, you know, I'm I'm spending all that time, but it, but there's actually uh, an impact, and and people are enjoying it, and people are benefiting from it, and I'm learning, and I'm making money. So it's great. It's great. Yeah. And yeah. for the people that want to do it for the money side, so yeah. they want to obviously start it like you and make it a business. When can they start getting sponsors? At what level? Do you need to have a certain number of episodes? Do you need to have a certain number of followers, certain reach every month? When do sponsors start paying? So, look, I would say um, find your niche and, and, and do something in your niche because if you want to be a podcast for everyone, for everything, then it would be super, super difficult to find sponsors and monetize in the, in the longer term. Mm. So when you have a niche and when you have a specific audience, um, it becomes easier to find a sponsor because you say I'm a marketing podcast or I'm a you know startup podcast, and then people that want to align with you, uh, people that like you as a person, your values, what you do, the content that you put out, it makes it easier for them to align with you. So I think the first step towards monetizing is you know finding your niche and sticking to your niche. And, and start building in that niche uh, because then the, that's people, sponsors who are interested in that niche will come to you. Um, I mean, secondly, of course, you know, you have to think about uh, growth, right? So so are your downloads growing or not growing or is it flat or, or so on, which means you need to make adjustments on your content, on the types of guests. So clearly, if your growth is flat, then something is not clicking. Um, and... So yeah, I don't know if there is a specific number, right? Because because podcast sponsorship is not only about numbers. Um, unless like you're a mass show and 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 you're super super successful and you have millions of downloads, then then yes. But when you are an expert in in a niche, people will will sponsor because they want to, you know, align with that niche and they want to align with you. Mm. So I don't know, maybe it could be 5,000 downloads, it could be 10,000 downloads or, or, or 20,000 downloads, but it's more of a negotiation at this point in time and, and you know, f figuring out who are the, the brands that want to um, associate themselves with you. So the people that sponsor my podcast are people that, that I approach and, and people that I choose and I think would be a great fit for my podcast. And there's quite a few now in the pipeline. You mean businesses? Businesses, businesses. Yeah, okay, got it. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's quite a few like that I'm working on actively at the moment, which you know, they haven't signed yet. But, um, but, I, but I believe that there's a very strong fit between what they do as a company and, and my podcast. Mm. So podcast here in this part of the world, it's not, uh, again, it's, uh, it's relatively new. Uh, I mean, you have like amazingly successful shows in Saudi Arabia and Arabic. So if you're if you're in that, I think you're you're great because you're you'll have brands that are willing to sponsor you, especially if you're catering for like the the Arab uh, uh, Arabic speaking uh, basically, or somebody who wants to consume content in Arabic. Mm. But for people like me that are doing English content. Um, yeah, it's uh, you need to get to a point where where there's a where there's a fit and there's growth, and the brand can see that, yeah. and then they can and then they can sponsor your show. So, I don't know if there is an actual like a number, a specific number. Any drawbacks for monetizing a podcast? Yeah, I mean, if it depends on, I think you need to stick to your guns, right? And you need to figure out what you want to offer your sponsor and and what is like a red line. So my recommendation would be uh, that the sponsors are just sponsors. So they're not uh, co-creators in the content. They don't have editorial decisions. They don't get to see, uh, you know, uh, an episode before it's released. So it's still your podcast because, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to compromise on, on what makes you successful. And that's like really, really important. Mm, so, so a lot of sponsors, you know, might say, ah, you know, uh, like we want to see the guest list or, um, you know, if we sponsor you, like we want our CEO to come on the show or, or something like that. It's, it's not like for me, at least it's not pay to play. So if you're a sponsor, it doesn't mean you get a spot on the on the show. 
um, again, it's everybody that gets invited on my podcast um, is handpicked. Is by handpicked you. by me yeah. exactly. Yeah. So um, I make the editorial decisions. Um, they the, can, yeah, I know they, what can, you mean. they cannot make yeah. any changes. So these are some of the drawbacks because it's good that you mentioned it because now if I want to start uh, monetizing it and I want to start looking for sponsors, yeah. I'm gonna be start talking. I'm gonna start talking to them, but they're gonna tell me, "Yeah, we need yeah. to spot." And I'll be like, "Ah, that's how it is. Okay, get a spot, right? Yeah, ah, the good one." Well, it's up to you, right? Mm. If you want to give them a spot, you can. But I think mm. it, it depends on whether it makes sense or not. But for me, I I don't want to do it. I don't want to get down that route because then yeah. you get uh, whoever is sponsoring your show coming and saying, "Look, we want an interview as well." Yeah. Um, and yeah, so so that's that's very important. Uh, no editorial decisions. Um, they are purely providing you with the, the the copy or the creative for you to read at the beginning or in the middle of the show. That's it. Uh, yeah. And you can get creative on that. So you can say, you know, it's the same spot that I will read at the beginning of every show, or uh, we can do it episodic. So basically, every in every episode, there's a different story. Mm. We can do it case study. So in every beginning of every episode, we we highlight. Um, I don't know, a, a customer, for example, from that brand that's sponsoring and how they're using that brand. So there's there's many ways you can get, get creative about the ad itself uh, as long as the brand understand that this is like an advertisement spot. Got it. Now, there are other things you can do with the brand outside. So, for example, in my sponsorship deck, you can... If there is a fit between me and the brand, you know, I can come to your offices and maybe do like a town hall with your CEO. Or um, I can come to an event that you do and I can do a panel or uh, I can do a speaking slot or something like that. So there are other things you could do with the brand. Uh, but but again, in terms of sponsorship of the podcast, it's it should only be this, this advertising uh, message. Basically, and everything else is, is can be negotiated, but it's separate. Got it. And has nothing to do with the podcast. And how got you? And a sponsor would sponsor a number of episodes, yeah. or they sign up a year, or how does it work? So ideally, you want to get someone for a year. I mean, that's mm. that's what I'm trying to do today. Okay. Because you don't want you don't want to be chasing sponsors all the time. But again, you can't get a sponsor for a year until you have like. The sponsor needs to be comfortable and confident that you are not going to stop and yeah. you are not going to quit and you're very serious about this business and you're not going to say something stupid that jeopardizes their brand, right? So the, the, the sponsors are are trusting you, uh, you know, not to do something stupid. Uh, so mm. so and 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 you need to you need to earn that trust, uh, and I think that happens over time. So. Maybe the sponsor will come and say, look, we'll sponsor you for a month or for three months uh, or per episode. It's not ideal, but it, it needs to start somewhere, right? And then when you have that credibility in the market and people know that you're here to stay, then you can start saying, look, minimum six months. Like for me today, I'm trying to get minimum six months. Uh, I'm, I'm not interested in short term uh, sponsors. Okay. Because you want to hire, right? You want to grow. You want to grow. This is a so for me. This is not a side project anymore. This yeah. is a business, and I need to hire people. I need to pay salaries. You know, and I need to grow the team. And and I have expenses, and I want to travel to conferences and do things. So yeah, it's uh, it, it 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 has a cost, and you mm. need that continuity, like any business. Interesting. So you need to have these sponsors all the time. Yeah, I mean, otherwise you have to prepare to fund it yourself, right? right. Uh, if you, again, unless your your content is uh, unbelievably viral for some reason, and yeah. and and but that would be like a, an outlier edge case, not uh, that's true, not not the norm. Yeah, got it. How do you find source guests for your podcast, and yeah. what other? ways you recommend yeah so i think that the the best way to source guests is through your network ideally you want to start with people that you know and you're comfortable with and you have a chemistry with that's how i started so everybody i think i've done 68 episodes um and i think i don't know 60 out of the 68 are people that i know really well Wow. So you want to start with your network, with the people that you like, because again, when you have chemistry with someone and you're comfortable with someone, your 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 content is going to be much better and sound much better. Okay. Um, and, and you'd be able to get them as well to say more mm. beyond what they 
you know would be <laughs> yeah. might be comfortable to say if if you have a personal relationship with that person so start with your network and then the second layer would be ask your network to recommend people mm. um and then you can you know layer three is you start going out to called outreach through LinkedIn or through other places. But I, I also get guests from conferences because I attend a lot of conferences and events. So I end up meeting people. I mean, tomorrow I'm going to do a morning yoga session because there's someone who I want to bring on, on my podcast and I know that he's going to be there and I want to go and meet him. So again, you, 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 find, uh, you find people at uh, conferences, events, uh, LinkedIn. But I think start with your network for sure. Okay. Because anyway, when you're when you're starting, they're the only ones that are gonna come and sit with you. Yeah. Like if you're nobody and you just started and no one knows you and you don't have an audience and people go on your Instagram and and uh, you know they see you have uh, 500 followers. Yeah. It's only people in your network that are gonna come and sit with that's you. True. That's how I started as well. And right. you're right. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's how. Um, you're right. Like the big boys, they're not gonna come uh, when no. you have a small podcast. No, they Although won't. I was able to get Neil Patel, he's a huge, you know, I don't know if you know, you know him? Um, Neil Patel, like he's in the digital world. Like anybody in digital marketing would know Neil Patel. Okay. Literally like 100% of people. Okay. Which is 100% of people, right? So he's huge. He's okay. invested a lot in his PR. and So he was able to, not he was, he said he accepted. And I just sent him a message on LinkedIn. Yeah. But he was interested in this market. Yeah. You know, he checked out the Because sometimes it's timing, right? Yeah. Sometimes maybe they launched a new product or wrote a new book oh, yeah. or something like That's that. Exactly and they're, right. they're on a tour and, uh, and they will come. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Do you invest in other personal branding ways or channels? And if yes, in what, how, and benefits? And what other ways, channels you like or plan to invest in? uh look i mean i per, personal branding is is important so um it's one of those things that you you have to kind of like be authentic and out there but also not overdo it and just be like narcissistic so look at me look at me look at me all the time so i think there's a balance between sharing what you're doing and and sort of you know here's me here, here's me, here's me, here's me, which I think there's a lot of that. I think there's a lot of people on social media preaching stuff. <coughs> and uh, I, I don't, I don't like that. I think it's, it's fake. Um, so yeah, so you, so you need to strike that balance. So, so the way I think about it is um, how, how can what I'm saying benefit somebody who's listening, right? So before I just post something, anything, I just ask myself the question, why am I posting it? And, and who, like, what is somebody listening to it or reading this piece of content that I put out? What are they going to learn from it? So I think that's a, a good sort of compass for me to, to, uh, to follow so that I always keep the, the, the person who is listening in mind versus what I'm trying to push on you or sell you or whatever. Luckily, again, my podcast, I'm not selling anything. So... So, uh, so it's not like uh, I want you to listen to my podcast so you can buy something from yeah. me. Uh, but There's yeah, no hook. but yeah, but still, you you want somebody you want somebody to benefit right out of that. Like they're they're gonna spend thirty seconds or a minute on your content. So what are they gonna get out of it? What what value did I bring to their life today? Mm. Um, so I think that's very important. I mean, I I I try to share. So one of my most active social media platforms is LinkedIn. So I try to share uh, a lot of my learnings on LinkedIn in terms of, you know, uh, dealing with uh, startups, dealing with investors uh, or having, let's say, uh, like the other day I posted, for example, about, um, you know, I was invited to a conference and I set up uh, and they wanted me to do a podcast there at the conference. And I said, OK, like, you know, I'm going to do my podcast there, but it, it will be a conversations with Lulu podcast and I want one, two, three. And they came back to me and they said, oh, no, but we're offering all the podcasters, you know, the same deal. Mm. And then you have to think, so do I want to be like all the podcasters or do I want my own thing? And then you have to make a choice. Do I say OK uh, uh, or do I say no? And so, so I post some of these learnings on, on LinkedIn and, and try to share what I'm learning and, 
you know, also get get feedback from people and so on. So, um, so yeah, in, in that case, for example, I said no. <laughs> yeah. And and sometimes you say no and you miss out on an opportunity. Yeah. But uh, sometimes you you think. Uh, this is the image that you want, That's right? Your brand. This, is, this is my brand, yeah. exactly. So, so if you want me to come, then you have to listen to, you have to do one, two, three. And yeah. again, I'm not a diva. It's not like I'm asking for something you are unrealistic. Somehow. Yeah, but yeah, I know what you mean. But but that's that's you, right? And yeah. then the next time people want to invite you, they have to think about that, and that becomes your brand. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so that's important. So branding is not just what you say on social media it's also what you do and how you behave with people uh, that's uh, and that that's your brand actually what what is not said is your brand yeah. versus what is said what are you planning to do how, what are you planning to invest in more in personal branding definitely will be will be doing more on social media i i don't think i've cracked social media uh, again i think i have a very good presence on linkedin uh, but uh, instagram tiktok all these twitter these channels i mean i haven't really cracked using them so 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 for the next you know up until the end of the year is going to be an experimentation period where i'm going to experiment with with the different social media channels and and see what hooks what works and be data driven right so really invest in understanding what the what the hell is going on on these platforms and and what is working and what is not um so so that's going to be very important uh, for me so i think you'll see me more on social media you'll definitely see more content different types of content whether it's uh, blog posts or videos uh, so so yeah there'll, there'll be more of that and, and and we'll see we'll see what what i i learn out of it yeah makes sense good for you yeah <laughs> yeah let's see awesome <laughs> Yeah, I mean, your content is definitely a uh, an Instagram type content as well. Like shorts, they're nice to consume. Yeah, right, but I think on Instagram, and... you need the, it's like, um, I think on, on Instagram, which 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 is something I would experiment with, is is more uh, how you package it, right? It's not necessarily the, the, the 30 second uh, reel or, or something like that. It's more the title and the caption. So I think that 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 thumbnail that you put, uh, and and the title that you pick is you know are so important, and that's kind of what gets someone uh, mm. clicking. Yeah. But again, it's it's yes. uh, it's mm. it's gonna be uh, experimentation. But like mm. anything, you know, when you when you run a company, you and and you're doing marketing, you have A/B testing, right? You mm. you you test a certain cover with a different uh, copy, and then another design with a different copy, and then uh, different colors or different shapes or whatever, a different message. And then you see, and you you test, you run you run campaigns on the three or the four, and then you see which one works better, and yeah. then you adapt. So it will be the same uh, process, mm. basically. Good. Yeah. Anything else I didn't ask you that would add value to the viewers and listeners? I think, you know, maybe just one point on, on the whole entrepreneurship thing and, and why I'm excited about it. I think, um, y you know, majority of people are, are in jobs and, and, and corporate jobs and so on. And I think you, you need that, right? And, and uh, you need different types of people doing different types of jobs for a, for a site to function and not everybody's going to be an entrepreneur but my 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 only my only worry sometimes is is that i find that people sometimes in the cor in the corporate job are very much uh, you know doing or focusing on a certain set of tasks that right that they do every day every day every day and 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 when you do that over a long period of time you become that these these tasks they 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 become your identity they become who you are and what you do and then if you lose that job one day then your identity is in question and you lose yourself and you don't know who you are so that's that's what i like about entrepreneurship and that's why i put out this content and that's why i also encourage people to invest in, in startups because you you want options you know you want optionality right so if you lose the job which people are losing jobs i mean there's no secure job anymore right i mean any company look at all the big companies the big tech companies yep. um some of the richest companies in the world they do a restructuring you're out uh, i mean so many people are are in that position and i think it becomes more dangerous when you're in your 40s mm -hmm. because you've been doing this thing for such a long time and that's all you do and that's your world and then you lose the job and then 
you know, yeah. you don't know what you want to do. And then it, it it's very, it's very hard. So, so yeah, I, th I, I guess it's really important that you kind of learn something from entrepreneurs that they are, they're always doing different roles and, 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 and learning all the time. And I think that that's so important so that you become more adaptable as a person and, and create options for yourself. So if you do lose that job, Right? Maybe you've done an investment in a startup that you can go and join. Or, you know, maybe you learned something on, on Lulu's podcast that you go and mm -hmm. and implement and start something on your own. So I think I think that's so important. Like I think having options and creating options for yourself are, are so important. Love it. Where can people find you? Um, yeah, so people can find me. So uh, conversationswithlulu.com is the is the website for the podcast. Uh, I'm also on YouTube and all of the podcast apps, um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Rami, Deezer, etc. I'm on uh, LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram, uh, and my handle, very simple, Lulu has an L-O-U, L-O-U, the French way. Okay. Yeah. I'll be tagging you anyway. Yes. And uh, so people can find you there. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks awesome. a lot.